crazy, crazy week. I hope everyone is having a good time. And again, welcome to another episode of Latin Explaining with Denise. My name is Denise Gonzalez for the ones that are new here. And I know there is a new, uh, a group of new faces and, um, you know, new people around. You guys let me know if the music is still out. Um, but I know there's like a group of new people and new faces around. Uh, welcome, guys. Also, I want to thank everybody that listens to Latin Explaining on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcast. Thank you guys so much for supporting this humble <laughs> public service. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. But thank you for supporting the platform. And also, um, I want to say to the people that are catching this on the replay, before you continue to listen to this, make sure that you hit that like button you subscribe if you haven't done so you bring your friends your family over here because today's topic is just oof. today's show is going to be explosive and i know a lot of people are going to have a lot of mixed opinions of course as usual that's what we do this stuff to get the conversation popping at least that's why i do it I like to um, start the conversation when it comes to topics like this. I see already that Jose and Johnny Mills started the chat. Welcome, guys. Thank you very much for being the first ones over here already. Um, and I want to, like I said, I want to thank everyone that supports the platform one way or the other. It's a pleasure to always come out here and and have people um Wanting, wanting to hear my uh, perspective on stuff. So I hope, like I said, summer is still semi here, but the summer vacation is for sure over, okay? So for the people that are still out there brawling and having a good time, <laughs> my darlings, it's time to go home. The party, it's over. I don't know if you guys remember that from, uh, who was it, Pink, that made that song uh, called Sober? <laughs> <laughs> the party's over guys so hey, come on it's time to call it quits and without any further ado let's get down to business because again the party it's over so get let's get ours started to the next level oh boy 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 <laughs> guys oh my god speaking about summer and vacations and stuff what the heck is happening with women this week and what i'm gonna share with you i i never want to start a show with this type of stuff but this is insane women take you guys think that the whole donald trump situation takes the cake this week for madness you are mistaken women do <laughs> at least crazy women and i'm gonna tell you something the the state of abuse uh, towards males nowadays especially during this week i don't know if it's the summer if they didn't had enough margaritas or if the husbands didn't book the garden villa or the right bungalow but these ladies are insane and who am i talking about first of all i'm talking about michelle branch in case you don't know who michelle branch is she had i believe in 2003 2004 very early 2000 she had a very notorious um uh you know, single with Carlos Santana, a little bit of this. And she apparently was giving a lot of this and a lot of that to her husband because she claimed that after finding out that her significant other was uh, sleeping with Haley McDonald, which is uh, her husband's manager, she decided, well, she was at home with the six-month-old daughter that they both shared. She decided that she had to take matters into her own hands and she had to also put hands on her husband for what her husband called the authorities and she was eventually arrested. So this is her mock shot, Michelle Branch. I don't know what's going on, but I mean, <laughs> hi, Robert. I see what Robert says. I had a crush on her in middle school and high school. Yeah, she's a hot chick. 
She's she's a hot chick. He says that something about pretty girls and guitars. Hmm, Robert, Robert. <laughs> Imagine, Robert, if you would have pursued your uh, crush in high school, you would have been the one calling 911 if something was going to go down because Michelle Branch did not came here to play. But I'm going to say something, guys. Uh, I see a lot of people justifying Michelle Branch for what she did. And I'm going to be very straightforward. Everybody not, uh, has dated, has been cheated on at one point or another, okay? That is not an excuse to put hands on anyone, okay? Just imagine for a minute that is a husband taking care of a baby, you know, at home, and he realizes that his wife is sleeping with another man. Can that husband beat up the wife and will we justify that? You know, because this is a problem with today's society. We like to justify violence when it comes from the female collective. I see that Johnny Mill says she did. She did. She used to get that song with Santana. To get, yeah, she she had, you know, uh, she had a, a, a pretty good, uh, you know, jump start with that with that song. I see that Robert says I will have gotten my butt beaten. Yeah. Definitely, you would have gotten a beating. So to be honest with you, I don't know what, what is it, but Michelle Branch and the people, again, the people that are justifying this, saying like, oh my God, you know, the circumstance, whatever, whatever. Come on now. Enough with the buffoonery, okay? I, I don't care about that. We have all been cheated on, you know. I know I've had bad experiences, you know. I know everyone has had better experiences in love. That does not justify us putting hands on people. I was taught never to put hands on any man or any woman for that matter. I mean, in high school, of course, I have the occasional girls fight here and there. But now as an adult, I don't do that. I don't put hands on people. If someone hits me, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> I see that Robert says, our society loves toxic relationships. Yeah, we, we do glorify toxic relationships. That is something that we like to make excuses for. And that is something that brings me to my next event in the same week, even though this case did not necessarily happen in the same week. This is something that a lot of people has been talking about. And we know this case because it has been notorious for months. And it's the case of OnlyFans model, Courtney Cleaney, or Cleaney, whatever her name is. I'm bilingual. You guys know uh, my pronunciation is not 100% apart, but I try my best. This model had, uh, you know, <laughs> look at Charles. Charles says, I have a no violence policy. She hits me, the relationship is over. You know what? Whoever raised you, to think that way did an excellent job. That is the best thing. Do not condone any type of violence. If somebody crosses the line, even to push you or try to do something to you, that person is not mature and healthy to be with you. And I'm talking to the guys because oftentimes when the aggression comes from us, it's it's supposed to be funny or it's, it's a matter of, of comedy or it's laughable. That is not true. That is not true. You should not put your hands on anyone. I don't care what they did to you. Walk away. <laughs> it's that simple. So going back to uh, OnlyFans model, I don't even know why. Do you guys, have you guys noticed how uh, lately it's like Instagram model, OnlyFans model. These people are not models, okay? She's an OnlyFans prostitute, okay? And basically she got, there's this Nigerian kid that got with her because that's that was his preference i'm, I'm not gonna judge him you know if, if that's what you like that's what you like and i respect it and i if you love it i like if you like it i love it um so they started dating and he moved to miami with her they live in an apartment and all of a sudden in april uh he comes up stabbed and dead and it turns out that supposedly the family started demanding that people march and you know, did stuff so that the law enforcement would charge Courtney with her boyfriend's murder. 
So a lot of people, especially from the black community, started feeling a little bit this bitter taste in their mouth and they decided to not support this movement or march or do anything for this man because in the past, unfortunately, he had very distasteful and xenophobic remarks regarding African-Americans. So of course, nobody decided to take any action whatsoever, leaving it up to the family. So they will have to handle it. And after pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing for months, she was charged with murder in the second degree for stabbing her boyfriend. Exactly, Ramon, welcome. She's a 304, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Robert says, don't call them prostitutes. Remember how we talk about Sierra? They try to cancel us. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Women don't like that term, but let's keep it real. If you are selling your skin, your body in any type, way, or form, I don't care if people are not necessarily touching you, if you're giving the world stuff that should be reserved for your husband, then you are a prostitute. You can put all the lipstick you want on that. So going back to uh, what happened with Miss Courtney, uh, a lot of people started making excuses for Courtney, and we saw it especially from the sisterhood saying that the relationship was toxic both ways, that they both were abusive, that they both were just as bad, that they both this, both that, you know, the typical stuff that we saw even with the Drake situation and the and the hot sauce, okay? They were both wrong. He was wrong for not flushing it and putting hot sauce on it, and she was wrong for, no, no, they were not both wrong. What is it about today's society that when it comes to us as women, we can't just accept that in reality, we do foul stuff, okay? We do foul stuff, regardless of how you feel about it. This is, okay, even if, it, let's say, for example, that the relationship was toxic both ways. Courtney did not wash up dead and stab. It was her boyfriend who did. <laughs> okay, let's keep it real. He was way bigger than her. It's a man, a full-blown, young, strong man that's healthy. He could have killed her if he was that abusive. I mean, that's the way I see it. Okay, if he was really that abusive, he could have killed her. She would have washed up dead and stabbed, not the other way around. How did she overpower this man and stab him? We don't know. And I don't know why they're being so tight-lipped about it, but it's so weird to me that this happened. And all these charges took so long to be pressed. And just as these charges are being pressed now and people start defending Courtney, Okay, new footage just literally came out. New footage came out showing some disturbing images. And again, if you have been a, a victim of abuse, uh, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about and I don't want you to get triggered. So uh, please skip that skip this part because it's going to be either if you're a man or a woman, if you have been a victim of abuse and you cannot watch it, you're uncomfortable around it, uh, just skip through this, okay? Uh, so you're, you're not exposed to this. But this is a footage that has been circulating for a minute now about what Miss Kearney, she allegedly says, wait till, let's wait till this um, passes. But she allegedly says that uh, she was in the receiving end of the abuse, but new footage just came out this week. Let's watch. She was her, that was her in the elevator. She's giving me a uh, 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 post-traumatic disorder. Like I have PTSD after, after Amber Heard. What is it about crazy white chicks and elevators? But I don't know if you guys can see. Who is, who is the aggressor here? Okay, like legit, this is, this is, this is the, this is the issues. These are the issues 
that we're talking about. This is this is what men are actually going through. And I'm going to try to play it again. I don't know if you guys uh, were able to see it, but this is legit. This woman is out here claiming that she was the abu abused. She was the victim of, I don't know what, whatever, whatever. That this man was horrible to her. That she had to go through so much stuff. But then we come to find out that she was having her own Amber Heard moment in the elevator with that man. Tossing him around and, and slapping him and stuff. Like, what the heck? What what in the actual hell? And if we say something about it and we say, like, well, I can guarantee you, I can already hear the sisterhood claiming that she was just, you know, uh, he was cheating on her and she was making some kind of weird excuse. Notice how she even grabs his hair unties his braids and everything and she keeps doing he's trying to just get to the apartment try to get her uh from him off of him and everything and she keeps pursuing the aggression it's so weird to me it's so weird i i don't understand it and it, it this is the thing and i'm gonna explain it even neighbors say that she was, they, they complain about all the constant fighting that this prostitute and this young boy had all the time, literally. So basically, you know, what we're seeing right now, it's, it's not, it's not a coincidence. It's not something we're making up, you know? And, and even though her lawyer claims that she acted in self-defense, do you believe her though? Because to be honest with you, I don't believe her. I don't believe her at all. Okay? I don't. And she she was the one, uh, she was the one that called 911. And in her 911 call, she says, I'm so sorry, baby. That That's literally in her 911 call. But I'm going to say something, and I mean, I'm not trying exactly, Rakim. You nailed it. The footage says it all. They say an image, uh, it's better than a thousand words. Yeah. A video, it's a million then. I see that Ramon says she knows there's a good chance she could get away with it and, she, and almost did. Yeah, absolutely. Because because she. this is the thing. A lot of women are not reading the culture lately. Where we're getting fed up with this whole, I'm a victim because I have a vagina. You know, you, you're not a victim because you have a vagina. You know, a lot of women out here are killers as well, are abusive as well. And speaking of this, the I'm telling you, this week, you think that the Donald Trump raid situation, <laughs> it's mad crazy? No, women take the cake. As if that isn't enough with Michelle Branch and this prostitute. Now we have another craze of another crazy lady. This time, this lady tried to kill her husband here in Irvine, California. It says, images of an Irvine woman allegedly poisoning husband release restraining order filed. I'm going to try my best. To explain this to you, there's there's a lady. She was a um, what was that? Well, she was a dermatologist, right? She was a dermatologist for uh, here in Irvine, and basically, what she did is that she decided it was okay to put Drano in her husband's drink that that was a cool thing to do. So she decided to go ahead and do that. And her husband started feeling like he wasn't well. And it's been going on for a while to the point where her husband decided to go to the doctor, have himself checked. And they found traces of what it would be a poisonous or toxic uh, 
uh, or toxic content in his body. So he decided, and he's been going for 10, over 10 years, this whole situation. Her name is Jue Jus, Jue Ju. She's an Asian lady. I, I don't, again, I'm not Asian. I don't know how to pronounce this properly. But she was arrested because her husband was clever enough to have himself checked and go to the doctor. So when he, he went to the doctor and they detected this on his bloodstream, what he did is that he post, he put a camera, hidden camera in his house and decided to watch his wife. And that's when he realized that she was putting Drano in his drink. And he drank it not knowing the result because he wasn't watching the camera at the time. But you can see in the footage, I'm not going to play the footage, of course, because I'm broadcasting to different areas where it's not allowed. But you can see in the footage how he drinks it and she continues with her life. She doesn't care about what happens to him. So when he checked, double checked the, the footage of what happened in the kitchen, he noticed that he was ingesting Drano, so he took it to the police. And right now, she's being booked and arrested and charged with poisoning her husband. So you have three different women, right? Because we like to say, in this country, we like to complain and say that it's only one demographic of women uh, being exclusively toxic. This, is, this doesn't discriminate. I even said it about us Latinas. It's the same thing. We come in hyena toxic killer, killer style as well. This is the thing about women in general. Exactly, Johnny. Johnny says, why do you think we got a TV show called Deadly Women on Investigating Discovery? Yes. And I see that Charles says, I live abroad. It isn't just American women who have an issue with accountability. I live in Morocco. The women over here have accountability issues as well. Yeah, this is something that's it's spread worldwide. For the people that love to, you know, uh, broad brush this or just like a group of people, that's not the way it is. This is something that happens very often. And it's so crazy because, unfortunately, it paints a bad image on the rest of the collective, which is why it's our job to call it out. Because it's, it's our image at the end of the day. But this is just a sample of what just one week what happens in one week? Now imagine that Michelle Branch, that Courtney Claney, or whatever her name is, and, and Ju, Jing, Jing Ju, I, you guys have to forgive me. Imagine if they weren't notorious people, if they weren't people that were uh, famous or had money or whatever those things. We wouldn't find out that they're doing these abusive things. We wouldn't know this. We would not have access to this information. The only way we, the only reason why we know about these cases is because these people are somewhat famous. Now imagine that every week this happens all over. That even this week there was non-famous people, non-famous women doing the crazy out there. What is going on, ladies? It's Women Madness Week or something. Did, did they did not pay for the Rai Cabana at the resort? What was it? Was There was too much wasabi on your uh, sushi or whatever? I don't know what the heck is going on. But one thing I'm going to tell you for sure is this ain't right. And this is what I want. The ladies that love to say the bot arguments and but, 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 but the what about isms and the like to justify this stuff. This is what men are talking about. This is what the men are complaining about, that you say that it doesn't happen, that you say that they are emotional and they're just uh, bitching and they're just whining and they need to grow a pair and they need to man up. How about you woman up and know your place? This is what the men are talking about. This is people that are beyond out of order. I love what Jose said. They probably... Uh, they're off their meds. There's a there's a serious issue here. 
Yes, Jose, there are men who may never want to get married because when we see these things, why should they run into danger willingly? For what reason? When you can potentially be paying for a lifestyle for your killer. Hi, Daniel, what's up? Yeah, like why, why would a man today with a brain would say, yeah, let me just go out there and marry and love this independent strong chicks and not bet them and just be a, a, a sweet alpha male. For what? So that you can get fucking poisoned by your own morning coffee? By the woman that you provided for? And she's been poisoning you for 10 years? Come on now. Come on now. Men are not making this up. They're not making this up. This is something that's happening. It's real. And I support them. This is insane. We got to do better. We got to do better. It's disgusting. It's just disgusting. And it's, it is literally because women are unruly. I see that Jose says men can cook for themselves and take care of themselves. They can outsource the sex. Yeah, absolutely. The only thing that men won't be able to do is reproduce and that can also be arranged it can adopt or hire a surrogate i mean ricky martin did it have a surrogate and reproduce but why is it today for a man what is it desirable to marry when there's such a high risk for either getting beat up if you make a mistake like michelle branch Right. Or you get stabbed if that woman gets angry one day. And if even if you don't get stabbed every time you try to go home at peace, she'll mess you up and give you a beating. Or she can slowly poison you to death. Like the Black Widow. And I don't mean that as the Marvel Black Widow. I mean like the Black Widow as in the killer. As in the, the deadly spider. <laughs> Just this just food for thought, guys. That that's just again, this week has been woman madness week. I, I don't know if they were all in their period. I don't know what's going on. But my advice to these ladies, take your damn meds and go to a shrink. ASAP. For Courtney, there's no saving. And may, maybe for Jen Choose, also there's no saving. But for Michelle Branch, at least. Take your meds, take a little bit of this and a little bit of that too. And probably a lot more, a little, a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> now, moving from this to that. Okay. <laughs> the Lord. Whew. Jesus Christ. I can't believe it. I know many of you guys have heard, right? This whole situation. Oh, and before I end with the women, let's not forget also even though this is not towards abuse towards men right we also had this case I, I almost did not want to talk about it because it's something that's very painful but this nurse from Houston was just charged this week as well with six counts of murder after her fatal car crash in Los Angeles there's an intersection here in La Brea and, and Slauson I drive by that at all times. That's one of my routes when I'm working. So this, this road, it's basically a cliff and it ends in a street light. And in that street light, there's a few gas stations, one in every corner. This lady, you have signs in the area that you're supposed to, uh, you know, slow down and whatever, whatever. I think it's a 40 miles per hour zone or 45, something like that. She plowed, plowed through this ongoing traffic, even though the, the, the lights were red. She plowed through traffic, okay, at 100, 90 to 100 miles per hour because she felt like it. 
And I know people are going to say, no, I know, you know, she she's not going, she wasn't doing that because of that. She was having a, a health issue. That was the sisterhood at first saying that she had an, a health issue. That there was a health issue with this S U N T because there's no other word. And I, you guys know, I don't usually don't like to call people that way, but this is that's what she is. Okay. She decided to go for drinks, get lit, and because she was mad because her, her and her boyfriend were having an argument. And she got in her car and continued to drive like a maniac. And around that same time, there was this young girl that was pregnant with her second kid, about to give birth in a few weeks. Her boyfriend, the father of her baby, and her one-year-old baby from another dude, they were driving to an appointment. She wanted to go see her baby and later on take her 11-month-old son that would would be one years old on August 17. Take him somewhere nice before welcoming his young sibling into the world. And this lady never got to deliver that baby. Her son never got to turn one years old. And her baby's father and her boyfriend never got to see his kid because this nurse... Miss Lorraine felt that the war, her war was crashing down and she needed to get lit and argue with her damn boyfriend. And she plowed through those cars, killing this whole family plus two more people. And still we have the sisterhood out here trying to say that it was a health issue that, oh, my God, I don't think she should spend the whole her whole life in jail. No, she should rot in hell. And when she's about to die, we should revive her and let her rot in hell, too. And before people come for me and say whatever, this lady had 13, one, three prior major crashes all around the United States. The one before this one, she injured two people. Okay? 13 major crashes. She is a menace. You might see her here crying and everything, but this lady is a weapon. Okay? I don't even know how they give her insurance for her vehicles no more. How she even still has a license. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. When Charles says they should sue the state too, this woman's license should have been suspended a long time ago. Legit. I see that Daniel Valencia says that lady had mental issues. Her reckless conduct caused a lot of lives. So vehicular manslaughter is the charge. No, she, she, this is the thing. They're going to charge her for vehicular manslaughter in five counts, but she's going to get charged with six counts of murder because she has special circumstances because of the 13 prior crashes. So it's not the vehicular manslaughter thing goes away. They cannot charge her with six counts of vehicular manslaughter because the baby technically, the unborn, a lot of people love to say that's an unborn fetus. You guys know I don't stand for that. So the unborn child uh, was not technically killed because of her. He died because his mom perished. So that's the reason why it she, she cannot be uh, charged with vehicular manslaughter for the unborn baby. So it's five counts of vehicular manslaughter, six counts of murder, because, of course, the baby died as a result of her criminal behavior. Hey, Roy says, what's up? Yeah, Johnny Mills. Lock her up and throw away the keys. That's literally how it is. Yeah, Roy says, I, I was explaining that she's charged 
with 11 different, um, she has 11 charges against her, five for vehicular manslaughter and six for murder. So this is, this is her situation. And now they want to say, oh, you know, uh, she has, she, she has, a, she had a suicide, suicidal thoughts. She could have taken pills. She could have went and scored some fentanyl. She could have overdosed on whatever she wanted. She could have put a gun to her head. She could have walked into South Central and started insulting a gangbanger. She could have, if she wanted to die, she could have just jumped off the, the, San, the San Pedro or, uh, you know, bridge or whatever she wanted. She didn't have to take a full-blown family plus two other women with her. You selfish prick. And she survived because, of course, she was driving a Mercedes-Benz. And you guys know the anti-collision technology of Mercedes-Benz. She's not going to die. She's, she's only going to have a scratch. Daniel Valencia says, wow, here in Texas, guy got capital murder for kicking his girlfriend and she lost her baby. She was seven and a half months pregnant. Yeah, she's actually from Houston. But since this happened in liberal participation driven California, unfortunately, she's not going to uh, suffer any harsh consequences because, again, she has a vagina and vagina trumps over everything else. Even the Constitution, even the rights of other people, it doesn't matter. I see that Panarican says, hey, Panarican, what's up? She says, people are actually making excuses for her as well. Yeah, people are making excuses for her. Oh, my God. She, first, it was a, it was she had a health issue. And I'm like, can you point out what health issue she had? Did she went into cardiac arrest or a non-epileptic seizure? You know, and, and nobody could answer that. Then eventually was she's she wasn't she wasn't drunk she was you know just arguing with her boyfriend she was in distress so now it's the boyfriend's fault he put her in distress it was not her fault that she killed six people and then when we refuted that that she had other thirteen crashes oh you know she has mental issues oh come on come on I see that Panarican says I wonder if those people who like to take the place of the people she killed yeah. I will love for them to trade places, but they will never do that because people, this type of people, the sisterhood, it's like Republicans. Literally, the, the sisterhood and this feminist are like, are like Republican people. And the same with Democrats, both of this uh, blue zombie army and, and, and the MAGA army. You can never understand the other side until it happens to you. When it happens to you, you know, then you can, you know, <laughs> you can understand. I, I see that, uh, Danny Valencia, when you said that murder is a premeditated intent to kill a person. But this is the thing. They're using the murder according to what the DA explained because first she, um, uh, what was the thing? She was drinking before with another person that apparently is becoming a witness for the state. And uh, she still got in her vehicle. And she has special circumstances from 13 prior major crashes. So, again, this is insane. Uh, Rocha says, in California, there's no such thing as an unborn child under the law. It's called a fetus. So the Republicans are using their emotional language to confuse people. No, I understand that. I'm, I'm not saying, I, I call it unborn child. But in California, even though it's a fetus, if you kill a fetus that a mom intended to have, that counts as, as murder. It counts as another count of murder, which is why she has six counts of murder. I see that Robert Lee has... Uh, so the next time there is a mass shooter who kills a bunch of people and then kills himself, I want to see the same energy energy from her defenders. Yeah, me too, actually. Me too. Me too. Me too. It's just weird. It's just, it's so weird. We're going to see what happens when, when this goes to court, to be honest with you. Because it's, it's so, it's so crazy. Hey T, what's up? How's everything going on in Ireland? It's it's so insane. It's just so insane. I hope in Ireland they do have more common sense when it comes to criminal behavior than here in America. 
Now, moving from criminal behavior, oh my God, this week, okay, if you, unless you have been living under a rock, you know for a fact that Donald Trump, Mar-a-Lago's property or his estate was raided by the FBI. You know this for a fact, okay? Now, a lot of people have a lot of mixed opinions about this, and I'm going to talk about this despite about what many people feel. And I get it, it's going to trigger a lot of folks, and others might understand what I'm talking about. Now, I'm going to just say it the way I see it, right? Uh, according to what, in my opinion, okay, oh, T says it's not better in Ireland. Oh, my God, come on. <laughs> so according to what's going on, right, there are pieces and documents that the FBI is analyzing right now, right? And it's basically, they're basically analyzing what of those classified documents, apparently Donald Trump took some classified documents with him to his estate, which is not an authorized um, place for these documents to be, because a lot of them contend, um, you know, have, have specific content that cannot be uh, in an unsecured location, and no one can regulate who have who have access to those uh, documents. That's what they are claiming. Okay, so basically, so basically, what's happening right now? Thank you, RJ. That is so true. When he says U.S. laws hardly make sense, they're always about feelings. Yeah. So basically. What happens is that they go into this warrant that was signed uh, towards Donald Trump and in the pursuit of this classified content. Now, Donald Trump says that they serve a warrant because they wanted to, because apparently he said, he claims, I'm not me, he claims that he would have uh, indeed let them come in they didn't have to um do all the craziness that the fbi did and he would allow them to just get the uh oh look t says that on a better note i'm having a homemade apple and rhubarb crumble with ice cream and cupa oh buen provecho enjoy your meal so basically i see that by area savage as well it's new to the channel welcome it's nice to have you here so basically he's he's stating that he would allow them to come in right and that there was no issue with the fbi coming to his house but then the fbi is saying that they try and they contact him and they actually you know uh he refused and i'm gonna just call it how it is again you guys know that I have supported the Cheeto in the past because it was what made sense for my finances. Now, I've stated before, I don't think by 2024 we should support him. I'm not going to support him. You do whatever you think it's better. Um, but still, I can't see the BS. We know for a fact that both Republicans and Democrats are upset at Donald Trump because Donald Trump makes them look bad. It's not because Donald Trump doesn't do pro-establishment stuff. We all know that the, both parties suck. I've said this a lot of times. Both parties suck. It's not that he wasn't doing the work of the establishment. It's that he was botching it and he was bad for the brand, which is the oligarchy. So they're now trying to look for something that could stick and you're never, and I'm, I'm saying this today, somebody pin this, this audio for the future. They're never going to find anything that will convict Donald Trump. Okay. Never going to find that. Okay. If you think he's going to jail, let put a number one in the shot. If you think he's not going to jail, put a number two on the shot. I want to, I want to see.
Now, one thing I will say is I see that number two, <laughs> everyone is a number two right now. I see that Panarican is a number two. Uh, Jose is, is given number two. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he'll ever be uh, convicted. He'll never be arrested. For the people that think that he's going to be arrested, let me break it to you. He's not going to. To even T from Ireland can see from that far away that he's not going to get arrested for anything. Okay. So going back to what I'm saying, guys, unfortunately, yeah, Panarican, he ain't going nowhere. Give me one sec. <coughs> I have to take some water. So, so going back to let's let's go back to what this person, this group of people are doing. Oh, Charles Ilby says, even if they find a smoking gun on Trump, Joe Biden is still a terrible candidate for 2024. Yeah, but this is the thing. The establishment has to do this with Donald Trump simply because it doesn't matter if he runs against whoever, he's going to win. You know this, I know this, everyone knows this. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real, okay? So if we go back to like the whole thing with the smoking gun, okay? People keep like, oh, the smoking gun. I don't know if you guys remember the, the January 6th. L let's go to the, the impeachment. The establishment tried to impeach Trump because of what? Can somebody put in the shot? I know why, but can somebody put in the shot why they try to impeach Donald Trump? Can somebody put it in the shot? Let's see how many of us, without looking at Google, let's keep it honest out here. Why they try to impeach Donald Trump. What he did not do that the establishment wanted to cancel Donald Trump. Because I see a lot of people that are right now cheering for this shit. I don't even know why. When it comes to black and brown people, we should not be sharing this in any way. Uh, Kevin C says, Russian files January 6th. No, that's not the reason why they try to impeach him. That's not the reason why they try to impeach him. This is that's what the media wants you to do. The Russia Gate has been proved that it's wrong, that, that that was a fake. It was never true. The the Russia Gate was a big conspiracy to get people riled up. I see that Roy Shea says, was it taxes, tax evasion? No, it was not. It was not that. Robert Lee says he shared classified files from the White House. No. Uh, Jose says the first time was regarding his involvement in the Ukraine. Bingo. Bingo. Thank you. He tried. Donald Trump decided to say we're not sending guns and weaponry and military grade weapons to Ukraine. That's what the establishment tried to impeach Donald Trump. I'm not making it up. This is not a Denise thing. Look it up yourself. So when people are like, oh, let's cheer this on. Again, I'm not voting for the sheet in 2024, so I have no dog in the fight. I'm just trying to show you that as part of the left, as part of the moderates, we don't believe in non-side. We believe in what's best for the people. Ah, Kevin, you killed me, Cardi B. Oh, my God. Okay, so yes, he refused to send weapons to Ukraine. He refused to do what Joe Biden is doing. That's what they try to impeach him. Again, Donald Trump makes the establishment look bad. That's why they tried to impeach Donald Trump. That's what they got mad at the Cheeto. That's literally what's going on. And when that smoking gun did not work, because it was, why do you think it took so long for this establishment that hated this man so much to find a second way or any way to impeach this man? It's very simple because 
they had to find something criminal in Donald Trump that they were not also complicit in. Let's keep it real. We got to wake up. Look at the amount of misinformation that's out there. I see that I'm confused, says Trump should have run as an independent. I believe it too. I believe it too. And this is the problem that people are not realizing. So when I see people right now, like clapping, I don't understand why. The January 6th was not even because of that. The January 6th uh, impeachment that they try to do is because apparently he incited uh, an insurrection. Could they prove that though? No. If you're watching the trial, you're going to see that the smoking gun was a lady that wanted to spread a bochinche. She did not witness this. She did not witness that Donald Trump grabbed someone by the neck, a secret uh, an agent of Secret Service. And as a matter of fact, the person that she said, okay, the person that she said told her that this happened said to Congress, I'm ready to testify that that is not true. That that's, what, that's not what happened. He never grabbed the steering wheel and he never tried to choke me. Guess what? They took him out of the list to testify. Again, this is not a Denise thing. This is public information. The lady was testifying a hearsay bochinche, a gossip that she did not witness. So what smoking gun they had? They keep, and I, I keep saying it all the time, people keep yelling, but this is political porn. This is political prosecution. And when we share this on, we're becoming pro-establishment. Conservative, right-wing, pro-establishment, goons, bootlickers. I see that Kevin C says, Twice impeached, questionable and erratic behavior, old, rich, and eccentric. D Donald Trump comes, comes out of this investigation clean. He beat it twice. Andrew Johnson and Clinton beat impeachment only once. Yeah, do because Donald Trump is a Julian Assange of politicians. Thank you, Jose. I want to see the likes up because I have more information regarding this. So if you're coming in, I want to see people hitting the like button. Okay. I know that not everyone can donate. Not everyone can uh, support with their dollars. We're going through hard times and whatever. That's okay. But a like doesn't cost you anything. So let's get those likes up. Okay. Jose, let me know if they, if they go up. Okay. So, so going back to this whole thing. Donald Trump refuses to send weapons to Ukraine. And now there is a conspiracy theory out there for the, the real left, because Democrats are not the left. We are the left. Okay? We are the left. The people that don't believe in either Republicans or Democrats because we're fed up. We are the left. And the bochinche running, uh, running corriendo running on the street right now is that Ukraine is selling our weapons, the weapons we're giving them to Russia. That is the, the gossip running around. That is the gossip. And how do we know this? Look, we're not making this up. Ukraine what the Guardian says about Ukraine, the most corrupt nation in Europe. I'm not making this up. This is not a Denise thing. The Guardian here says that they're the most corrupt nation in Europe. The Times also published the same thing. And you're telling me that we're impeaching a president that decided that we should not send these people military-grade weaponry because they're too corrupt. But he's the traitor? 
He is a traitor. Make that make sense. Ah, Roy Chess says Donald Trump should have been impeached for that orange skin. He is he from outer space, an uh, alien made it into the presidency. Come on, yeah, that that I agree with you. That skin is disgusting. And the cat that he has for hair, whoo! Come on. <laughs> so come on, guys. Let's start exercising our, our, our critical thinking out here. We've been conditioned to think that things are backwards, and that it's it it worries me. It does. And as if that isn't enough. We have, it gets even crazier because now we have people that are supposedly the left because Democrats love to say that they are the left, but they're just conservative progressives. Marjorie Taylor Greene, your favorite representative, tweeted, defund the FBI. That's what she tweeted when this happened to Donald Trump. She said, defund the FBI. Bi, and I'm 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 gonna say look. Okay, I am. People are like, oh, the espionage, act, the espionage. Act, the, I want people if if people don't know what the heck Donald Trump was impeached for, and don't get me wrong, when it first happened, I didn't knew either. I had to. Uh, became aware of that later. I didn't even pay attention to that. But if people don't know, if people don't know what Donald Trump was impeached for, especially the people sharing this stuff off, do you think people know what the Espionage Act is? I'll tell you what I think the Espionage Act is. It's one of the most crazy laws out there on the books. It was never, it's it again, it's one of the most archaic, by the way, because if I'm not mistaken, somebody correct me on the chat. I think this it, the Espionage Act wasn't created uh for the World War One uh stuff that the government was ashamed of. They they criminalized. I think it was the World War One. I'm uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Espionage Act was literally something that was left from that era. We're talking about a hundred years old law. Okay. It's just to criminalize when people release information that embarrasses the US government. Nothing else. It's nothing else. It's stuff that we're ashamed of. We're going to just use the espionage. Like, oh, this person is, is, is publishing stuff that's that's classified information. Of course, you want to hide things that make you look stupid. But before people, people did not knew the Espionage Act up until it was used on the Cheeto, on the orange man. That's just how it is. Because how come, do you know who Julian Assange is? Or Edward Snowden? Or Daniel Ellsberg? Because I know who they are. I know who they are. And if you know who, at least Julian Assange, who's responsible for the WikiLeaks and exposing information as a journalist of criminal behavior that we were having overseas for the people to know what your tax dollars are doing overseas so we can avoid terrorist attacks and people hating us in the world? Thank you, uh, Jose. Yeah, it came into law in 1917. So yeah, it, it's the only, it, it's as archaic as World War I. This the Espionage Act has been used on, on individuals that are anti-war. People that are exposing anti-war stuff. It has never been used on anything else. If you're anti-war, if you're going to spread the news that we're doing crazy stuff 
somewhere else and that we're cheering on and funding wars that will kill civilians and innocents and thousands and millions of people, you're going to be put on that radar and they're going to use the Espionage Act against you. How can you be pro-Julian Assange, but you can be pro this whole thing about, oh, defund the FBI? Because I've seen a lot of people saying like, oh, you know, uh, the FBI, it's, it's, it's good. The FBI did their job. Uh, you know, uh, the, the Republicans right now want to, uh, you know, the Republicans are trying to defund the, the, the FBI and, 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 you know, they're trying to do all these things. And I love this tweet. I love this tweet that I want to show to the, to the, the, the zombie, the blue zombie army that love to hate because it, they're stupid and they're letting propaganda ruin their chances. Uh, Brianna Joy Gray, I love what she said when she says, Marjorie Taylor Greene is right about the FBI, bad faith or not. And, and that's, not, that's another thing. What the fuck do you care if Marjorie Taylor Greene is doing this for her own purposes? This is the opportunity to say, hey, Trumper and Democrat and lefty and moderate, let's come together now that you know, you're in this momentum that's anti uh, establishment enforcement, law enforcement, and let's pass the brief act. Let's pass it. I'll, I'll get on that later. It says, in today's radar, I argue that the left should take advantage of the right's new acknowledgement of systemic bias and push to abolish the FBI, an institution that has always protected elite power, not the people. Again, when have you seen the FBI being a uh, 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 trumping for integrity because last time I, and I've, I hate to see black and brown people cheering this shit on you look mad stupid if you're a black and brown person and you're basically defending the FBI right now because the FBI has killed every single one of our heroes you look mad retarded and I'm sorry that I'm using that word but you look mad slow when you're sharing this stuff on because you and me both know that the FBI is just as corrupt as anything else in this country. And what you should be doing is telling the MAGA cult, you know what? That's right. We've been telling you, I told you so. I told you more than 70 years ago. That's, that's the position that you would think black and brown people that know this truth for a long time should be doing. That's what we should be saying. And I've seen even my Puerto Rican brethren say, oh, you know, the FBI knows what he's doing. You know, the Shito is a criminal. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, didn't the FBI surveillance Luis Muñoz Marin so that Puerto Rico could be an eternal bondage? Or you did not read the, the 2001 release documents from the FBI? There's over 400 pages. That's what they did. So that they could kill the nacionalistas, they could kill the macheteros, they could kill our beloved Pedro Albizu Campos. So how how the how in the hell you're sharing on the same three-letter agency that torture our national hero with radiation? It was such a heinous torture that only 18 prisoners. According to the book Plutonium Tapes, this is not a Denise thing. Again, it's time to start reading. If you pick up that book, the Plutonium Tapes, you will see that only 18 people were tortured that way by the FBI. Pedro Abiso Campos was one of them. Oh, but today the FBI is fucking Iron Man. All of a sudden. And instead of us acknowledging the, the right wingers, the MAGA cult, Finally, they're so freaking slow. It takes them decades, almost 100 years to understand what we have been saying. But they finally understood it because, again, like I said, they understand things only when it happens to them. I don't care why Marjor Marjorie Taylor Greene says defund the FBI. I don't care about what her reasons are. Do you? What I care is that she acknowledges a problem we've all been saying. I guess 2020 
we were right. And it's time for us to tell, do you remember when we said, now let's get it together. Now let's get it, to, let's get it done. Now that we have a consensus, let's get it done and pass the Breathe Act. In case you don't know what the Breathe Act, because again, that's another thing that people don't read about. In case you don't know what the Breathe Act is. And it's something that's being about to be voted on, on Congress, it's a waiting voting. It's a waiting vote. If you don't know what the Breathe Act is, it's a proposal for a federal omnibus bill presented by the electoral justice of the movement of black lives the bill proposes to divest taxpayer dollars from policing and investing in alternate community-based approaches to public safety. So it will defund the FBI. So instead of paying attention as to, oh, why Marjorie Taylor Greene is saying that, she's saying, I don't care why. She doesn't have to think like me. We have the same problem, though. We got to work together. But instead of doing that and coming together to solve a common, when did you ever thought that a right winger was going to have the same problems that the Black Panthers were having? Or that uh, Mr. Malcolm X had, or that Pedro Albizu Campos and the Nacionalistas had? That has never happened. Oh, but no, you, 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 you know, you know the the Espionage Act, and and before people come at me with that bullshit, before people come at me with that bullshit again, if you have not known about the Espionage Act, this is a this is a person, and for the people that are here that are my Mexican brethren, you guys know that Mexico and every Latin American country, because we all come from very corrupt countries very corrupt countries and for our one of our corrupt countries to acknowledge that america has corruption in there and they they did something bad that says a lot okay so when people say oh the espionage act the espionage act was used against people that are anti-war one of them being Julian Assange. And before people say, oh, Julian Assange, this, this, and that, you don't know who Julian Assange is. But one thing I'm telling you is that Lopez Obrador, Mexico's president, says he pleaded for Assange in a letter to Biden to give him asylum. He says, Mexico's president says, country renewed previous offer of asylum for WikiLeaks founder wanted in the US on several charges. This guy right here. This journalist that was brave enough to bring us the truth. And America thought that he shouldn't. So they persecuted this man, ruined his life, put him behind bars. Because they could. Because, oh, he, he revealed classified information. That's, that's what the Espionage stands for. The Espionage Act stands for that. Persecution of people that the establishment doesn't like. That's what it is. You can put all the lipstick you want on that. But that's what it is. And for the Mexican president to acknowledge that, come on. Come on now. Come on now. Again, I don't know what to tell you. But this is what's going on. And again, People keep saying a lot of stuff and yelling at the top of their lungs and 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 saying that you know, oh my God, you know, uh, th this country is is cleaning house. He should be in jail forever. He's this and that. He's so bad. You're okay with fifty four billion being funneled into the most corrupt nation in Europe that. You're again the blue. Why I grill so much the blue zombie army people that are suffering from Washington brain syndrome because you're pro war, pro establishment, anti workers, anti people. You're a bootlicker. Thank you, uh, Jose. Before you comment, please read the Espionage Act of 1917. Yes, 
Vaya Rea Savage. That is crooked. And that's what's happening. That's the state of this country. For Mexico to be, be less corrupt. Mexico is less corrupt. Again, I'm going to say one third time. Mexico is less corrupt. <laughs> and to acknowledge the freedom of speech rights that Julian Assange has as a journalist and condemn that as corruption and a criminal act and provide asylum. Come on now. Come on now. That, that's that's all I'm gonna say. There's a list a lot, and I'm not again, I'm not defending the Cheeto here. Vote green for all I care. Because both again, both parties suck. But we look mad stupid defending the FBI right now. When we know very well how it was founded, okay? I don't, your hatred for Donald Trump out of nowhere, because again, what has he done to you personally or your people personally that grants this man any more hate? I'm not saying don't hate him. Any more hate than you will have for any other politician. And people are like, well, he's racist. So is Joe Biden. So is Kamala Harris. So was, to a degree, Barack Obama, believe it or not. He messed up with black and brown people. I can continue the list. Oh, he didn't, he didn't do anything for us. He freed up thousands of black men that Joe Biden put in prison. Again, I'm just pointing out facts out here. Ah, Risa Ram, yeah. <laughs> the mean tweets. That's another, yeah, that's that's what he, that's what people, oh my God, you nailed it. That's what people hate him for. I forgot, he's such a bad guy. Those tweets were so mean. I'm still crying. They were so mean. I cannot believe he was allowed to tweet those things. Good thing is they banned him. <laughs> they banned him. <laughs> those damn mean tweets. Just imagine, guys. Just imagine. Give me one second, guys. Guys, I'm going to take a three-minute break. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to be right back, okay? So take a seat. I'll be right back with you guys. Baby, baby, let me tell you something I Special, more perfect than a diamond Got the body of a wine glass I granted you permission Yeah, I give you the hard pass uh, Let's not let all of this time pass I want you in forever On heaven, earth, beyond that I like you, I like to See where we can go beyond here And if you feel that way too Let's 
go fly away and see where we live Baby, I would, uh, baby, I would Like to get to know you Baby, I would, uh, baby, I would Like to see if you feel this way So I've traveled the world and I've never seen quite a smile Never seen such a girl as beautiful as you are tonight It's precious, that's why I can't waste none of it You're my prescription, make me OD fall out, forget Baby, just listen, I'm finna wrap it up real quick Get full of gifts, like a present I call that Saint Nick uh, If you choose me and make me a boo I'll stay beside you, hope you fight all the obstacles I'll always treat you, make you feel everything possible I'll always love you and trust you, oh baby You see me through all my We are back. We are back. Sorry about that, guys. I needed to take a minute to take some water. <laughs> but, guys, again, going back to what I was saying, oh, my God. Look, guys, it's time to use it. You have it. Use it. Research this information. Don't just take what I say and run with it, please. Because imagine, I could be lying, but research it yourself. Read it up yourself. You will see it and you will start making your own conclusions. What I don't want is for people to just believe and take me at face value. Okay. Oh, I see that uh, by area Savage says Obama deported more immigrants than Donald Trump. No, you're wrong, actually. Uh, Barack Obama deported any, reported more immigrants than any president before him. Uh, combined, actually. So, come on. And Robert Lee says, Trump was rich and couldn't be bought. He spoke his mind. Yeah, it, you know what's the thing? It's like Donald Trump, even though, again, he was still doing the establishment agenda. He was still doing the, the messed up stuff that we all complain about. But he was making them look bad. And then he had the audacity to be anti-war. Again, in this situation right now, when we're about to go into a nuclear war, we're trying to, to dance merengue with, you know, uh, the whole uh, nuclear powers of the world. Who's the person calling for peace? The person that we all thought was going to push the red button, the Cheeto, the orange man, is the one saying, no, I mean, there's no need for this to happen. You never, Putin should, should have never said the N word, which is the nuclear word. He just never said that. We should calm down. We should call for peace. We should never, do, come on now. We saw this inflation, according to Joe Biden, the inflation is Putin's fault, Right. And the reason why that happened is because we weaponized Ukraine. Did we not? So if Donald Trump was not trying to arm Ukraine any further, was he trying to preserve the economy? Yes or no? 
That is if we use Joe Biden's excuse. I don't believe that way, but at least when it comes to gas and, and wheat, yeah, of course. Wheat as in, you know, what we make bread and stuff with. Oh, I see that Kevin sees us throw, throw the, the catch-up banner. So, yeah. We got to start looking at these things. Jesus Christ. Apparently, there's an accident around here. I apologize, guys. There's Apparently, there's an accident close here. So, again, you got to... You got to start exercising a little bit more of critical thinking so that these things don't fly you by. Do not unplug. And I think I said this at Radical Latinos stream. There's no way, there's no way right now that you should be voting Democrat. I believe you should not be voting Republican either. But I think if you want to vote Republican, I understand why that will make sense to you. But what doesn't make sense in any way is it's voting Democrat. I would prefer if you don't vote for none, but I can interfere with that. But Democrat, the first step out of the plantation for black and brown people is Stop voting Democrat. The second step out of the plantation, disconnect from mainstream media, Fox, MSNBC, CNN, all these news outlets, you know they're not truthful. Disconnect. That's the second step out of the plantation. The third, stop being a bootlicker and a defender of the establishment. You know the FBI is corrupt. I don't care if you like Donald Trump or not. You know that they did this illegally. Because, you know, this is a criminal organization with power from the establishment. Come on now. They're the establishment police. Okay. Let's just keep it real. I see that Roy Chess says, so you think Trump would, would not have supported Ukraine now that Russia invaded? I don't think he, I don't think this would have happened under his, um, under his presidency, to be honest with you. I don't think he would, because he would, because if you look at Putin, what he has said before he even uh, went into um, this whole thing with Ukraine, it was because of the 2014 situation going on over there. Uh, so basically, uh, Donald Trump put a like a like a pause button on that by not sending more weapons to Ukraine. And, and Russia warned us and said, I don't want you to expand NATO and I don't want you to keep arming Ukraine. I don't want you to militarize Ukraine. It's like, for example, I say that China starts giving a lot of weapons to Mexico, military grade weapons. Do you think the US will allow that? That's, that's just how it is. That's just how it is. I, I think Roisha says, I think any president will assist. I don't think he would. I don't. I think he will call for peace. He will say to Ukraine, I'm oh, sorry, because he tried not to do this. And for people that were saying, because I said it before, for the people that were saying that, oh, you know, he was pro-Russia. Again, Russia Gate has been dismantled completely. And you can go four years ago or even five years ago, you can go to the NATO meetings when you have Donald Trump even being laughed at when he said, we need to stop buying oil from Russia because we can't. And, and he said this specifically to Germany. We can't put 4% of our GDP into NATO to defend you from a country that you're purchasing money, purchasing oil and putting money into their coffers. He literally said that verbatim. It's inappropriate. He even said it like that. It's inappropriate that you ask America to put 4% of our GDP into the NATO funding for us to protect us against a country that you're purchasing goods from. It's inappropriate. That's that's thank you, Rizzo Rem. Yes, Ukraine was provoking Russia by trying to join NATO, and we were trying to do that, and we're still expanding NATO. And when we promise, we promise we were never going to do that. 
We did. Ah, Kevin C says, I watch CNN, Fox, MSNBC, and C-SPAN just to see what they're lying about. ESPN is the only legit mainstream media. Go Cleveland Browns. Yeah, it is true. Go UFC. I love it. Look, again, imagine, I love what Risa Ram commented. Imagine if China convinced Canada and Mexico to become communists. Will America go to war with the two countries to protect itself? Of course it would. Of course it would. Saying otherwise would be madness. Of course it would. But they, oh no, when Russia does it, it's bad. When they do it, it's bad. You know, when they put Brittany Griner behind bars for weed, it's bad. But when we do it, it's called obey the law, law and order. When they do it, it's communism. When we do it, it's law and order. Don't you know? That's, that's literally it. And to the defenders of the establishment, shame on you. Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. You should be embarrassed of yourself. You should. So again, keep this in, your, in the forefront. I don't care what majorly... Taylor Green is demanding alongside the right wingers for the first time in I don't know how long. I think this is the first time in American history that they're becoming anti establishment. It's time for us to acknowledge that they came to the same conclusion as the left. Ignore. Whoever is trying to get you mad, oh, if, if you don't do it for the reasons I do it, then I, I don't want it. Not that we're not in a position for I don't care what, what reasons they have. Just remember that. I don't care if you if you but okay, put it number one in the chat if you care the reasons why Marjorie Taylor Green is demanding to have the FBI defunded. If you care, put it number one in the chat. If you don't care, put it number two. Because I don't. All I care about is that we have the same mindset. We want this corrupt organization gone. Gone. Exactly, Nani. Exactly. And they were and they were provoking Russia. And that that was with the with the guns we provided with them under the Obama Biden administration. Let's not forget that it was Donald Trump that said no more, <laughs> no more weapons. So if you learn something today, you learn that that's why they tried to impeach him the first time. Thank you, number two, exactly. I don't care. So guys, that, I know I extended myself with the news, but that, I, I needed to express that because a lot of people today, man, come on, come on. Just, just come on. And then for the people that get offended, I know I'm under a rain of snowflakes out here. I can take it. I can I can take it. Just keep keep pouring keep pouring your snowflake mindset on the comment sections. You can send me all the snowflake DMs. I, I can't, it's okay. I know your feelings are hurt. No one cares. <laughs> no one does. Oh my god. Exactly, Johnny. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Danny just came in and he literally came at the same conclusion that I've been saying, explaining here and dissecting for a while. Trump is racist, but he's exposing the feds for, for what blacks and Latinos have been going through and complaining about since the FBI's inception. Thank you very much. 
If I had a third thumb, I would give it to you. Thank you. It doesn't take too much critical thinking to figure that one out. So to the people that are like, oh my God, no, Donald Trump is an asshole. He should rot in jail. That's all I have to say. It's time to stop. It's just, it's time to stop. And before, I, again, I know that the, the blue zombie army, it's going to come at me. I get it. I get it. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, I know you hate me. It's okay. You're not alone. You're not alone. But guys, that has been all the news I had today. Like I said, I overextended because we had a lot of madness to cover this week. And you guys know that I haven't been here because last Sunday I took it off to be with my boo. Uh, but I had to I had to talk about this. And again, you're gonna see more and more lies regarding the orange man and his quote-unquote criminal classified bullshit whatever please use your brain okay don't don't jump we're not seals okay let's not start clapping the minute we see a ball bouncing all, all over us okay let's just okay let's just keep it like that keep it simple now <laughs> i know you waited long enough for this but let's go into our main topic Well, 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 Mexico echoes for war. Guys, I am pretty sure that you have heard what's going on in Tijuana, Mexicali, Baja California, and Juarez. And before, and I'm going to say this. Ah, Danny says, Denise, this raid is going to play into the John Doran investigation. Oh, my God. This this raid is gonna be the biggest stain in the FBI uh, reputation. I, I can guarantee you that. But guys, before people come at me, because I know the last time I spoke, I think I spoke about uh, the Mexican cartels like over a year ago, and I had like fifteen year olds raining from the sky like little bitches, like the Powerpuff Girls. Please don't message me regarding this stuff. If you disagree with what I have to say regarding Mexico and the criminal organizations over there, write it down on a piece of paper, fold it, and you know where you can put that paper. Okay? I don't, I don't, I don't care. Okay? Before you come at me like... Just don't. <laughs> just, just don't. Okay? I don't care. I don't care. And it's not going to change the fact that the video is going to remain up. I'm still going to be perspective. And what that's going to do is encourage me to continue to talk about it. You don't want that. So keep it to yourself. <laughs> that's all. That's a disclaimer that I have to say. Yeah, my dad, yeah, because a lot of people don't realize this. But yeah, there's they, they run from the sky like little bitches. Like the, the park of girls. You know how they come down like that? Shoo, from the sky and that's how I see them they come out of nowhere <laughs> but guys going back to the main topic you guys know that this past Thursday there was a lot of tension coming from the U.S. consulate and they were talking about the fact that there was a remain in shelter uh, issued by the U.S. consulate at the same time that there was a warning uh, to American uh, to American people saying to the people that they advise, you know, to not travel to Mexico, even though there is uh, there is a festival. I think it's the Baja Beach. Uh, someone correct me. Uh, if there is the Baja Beach Festival going on down there, I think it, it's, um, it was, uh, what was it? It's, um, 
Baja Beach with Rosalia, uh, the, I think, Farruko and all these people are over there. So a lot of American people, first of all, you guys know that Americans are going over there to the border to pump gas, to go to Costco, to buy goods because it's cheaper in Mexico. So a lot of people cross the border up with us and go into Tijuana and other places that are close to the border because it's cheaper. So the U.S. consulate in this past few days, uh, you know, advise people to shelter in place. And I'm going to uh, show real quick uh, regarding what. And, and later we're going to watch a video. But it says uh, basically Mexico's violence prompts shelter in place warning from U.S. consulate. And it says... Uh, the U.S. Consulate General in Tijuana is instructing American government employees to shelter in place until further notice after reports of violence in parts of Baja, California. Reports of multiple fires, roadblocks, and heavy police activity in Tijuana, Mexicali, Rosarito, Ensenada, and Tecate prompted the announcement via Twitter from government officials. The U.S. Consulate General Tijuana warned the public to avoid the area and seek secure shelter for those in the Baja California area. They should monitor local media for updates, be aware of their surroundings, and notify friends and family of their safety. I encourage our binational residents to be cautious and follow the recommendations from the government officials and avoid unnecessary travel to allow authorities to do their work and maintain safety. Safety, I'm sorry. My thoughts are with those impacted by the incidents, says the San Diego County Vice Chair Nora Vargas on Twitter. At the same time, the Baja Beach Fest, a three-day music festival celebrating reggaeton and Latin music, is also happening in that area of Mexico this weekend. So this is what's going on right now. And before uh, we go deeper into uh, why they issued this statement when it comes to Mexico, I want to share with you what has also circulated for the people, my fellow Latin explainers that don't speak English. Basically, this is a random anonymous message that says, it's only to let you guys know, everyone knows, that this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, starting Friday at 10 a.m. until Sunday, 3 a.m., we're going to do a mess so that the effing government free our people. We are the Jalisco cartel of new, new generation Jalisco cartel, the CJNG, I believe. We don't want to hurt innocent people. It's better if you don't leave your homes because we're going to basically attack or kill anyone that's on out in the streets. So basically, they let people know in advance, hey, you can't come out of your homes. We're going to be doing this stuff, uh, you know, and, and this is what's going on. And this is our agenda right now. Okay. So and first of all, that was very kind. Like, I wish, <laughs> I wish, you know that our criminals out here will tell you tell you when they're going to open fire, right? You don't? Give me one second. I wish they would tell us. Don't you wish like they would tell us like, "Hey, we're going to open fire in this place." Imagine if somebody, if Lorraine would have told that family, "Hey, don't don't take this tree because I'm gonna I'm gonna plow through you and kill you with my vehicle." I wish, you know. But aside from that, of course, no one wants to be isolated in their homes for three freaking days because the cartel has a little a little perretita with the government. Okay. Now I'm gonna say that what I've seen, the images are a little bit too harsh, so I'm not going to show them, but I want you guys to hear, uh, listen to the audio. So I'm still going to uh, share a little bit of what the news are talking about. So you guys can uh, actually listen to what's going on. So pay attention because it's, it's a, only a four-minute video, okay? 
Tonight with Baja, California, on high alert for escalating violence from drug cartels and U.S. citizens warned to avoid certain areas, including Tijuana. There are ongoing reports of shootouts, vehicle fires, and roadblocks throughout the region, with the northern part of Baja in a voluntary lockdown. A warning was sent from notorious drug cartels working throughout Baja, instructing or telling residents to stay inside their homes to avoid getting caught in the crossfire as they stage violent unrest this weekend in Tijuana and several surrounding cities. And from the U.S. consulate, warning U.S. government employees to shelter in place until further notice. And this is going on during a three-day music festival in Rosarito with thousands of Americans in attendance. Fox 5's Clara Benitez is live from San Ysidro and spoke with a San Diego resident now trying to safely get back home. Clara. Well, Misha and Jason, many of those San Diegans who cross into the Tijuana every other weekend. Well, they didn't even know about this threat until they had already crossed and started seeing those cars on fire. Major police presence in those roadblocks. Now the U.S. consulate is advising citizens to avoid the area and notify their friends and family about their safety. Cars, taxis, buses, and trucks completely engulfed in flames throughout northern Baja California. Apparently, they pulled the man out of the truck and set the cab on fire to block the road. The Baja News newspaper reporting more than 20 vehicles throughout Tijuana, Ensenada, Rosarito, Tecate, and Mexicali set on fire by Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. This cartel is announcing that they're going to start doing some, well, attacks, yeah, under their name so they can call the attention of the government because they want some people from them to be released. Part of the Now, I don't know if you guys heard, basically, uh, <clears throat> what these people are doing or what they're claiming they're doing. Again, this is not a Denise thing. This is what the news are reporting, okay? So, again... Like I stated before to the people that get very sensitive about this, you know, before you come at me with the... This is the news. Go to Fox San Diego and talk to them, okay? <laughs> but basically, they're confirming this random anonymous message that says that the the apparently this criminal organization warned the public that they were going to be doing this and that they should avoid being outside. And at the time, of course, the reason why this is making news is because there's thousands and thousands of Americans that are attending the Baja Beach Festival that's going on. And it's so crazy to me, uh, you know, <laughs> I see that Daniel Valencia says, I'm from a region where locals are given a heads up and not to come out at such and such time. Yeah, I mean, at least that's an act of kindness. Uh, however, I think, you know, it's, it's still, you should have the freedom to walk uh, freely in your own country. But that's another, a topic for another day. But I, again, it's just confirming that there is something brewing down there amongst the criminal organizations in Mexico and the government. There's something going on down there that we're gonna discuss even further uh, over here, but let's keep on hearing what they're talking about. Message to stay inside. We don't want to hurt good people, but please stay home. They say that. Stay home, and, and we just want the government to do what we want. The Mexican government advising residents to stay home after the threat, and the U.S. government advising the same, telling Americans to avoid the area, and if in the area, seek secure shelter. Be aware of your surroundings and notify friends and family of your safety. You might hear about this, you know, once in a great while. I've always, whenever I come to Tijuana, I'm all, I always feel safe. We go out at night, we, you know... We, we do a lot of things in the city, and today's the first time where I, I don't feel safe. And the threats come just as one of the biggest reggaeton music festivals, Beach Baja Fest, is underway in Rosarito. Organizers sending out this message, acknowledging the events and advising guests to look out for their friends and call local authorities if they see anything. In the meantime, as some San Diegans try to find a safe way home. We're just trying to plot that out right now. I just, I'm not quite sure what to do, you know, and then I have to leave him behind because he's not eligible to cross the border right now, which that, that makes me scared.
Yo, Baja California governor met with all of the mayors of those affected cities. They even mentioned that they were talking to the Mexican president. Now they did send uh, more reinforcements. So the Mexican National Guard has made its way to Baja California to essentially maintain the peace this weekend. Reporting live here from the U.S.-Mexico border, Clara Benitez, Fox 5 News. All right, Clara, thank you. This is obviously a developing story. Are you getting any updates on the number of blockades or vehicles destroyed? Yes, yeah, so, so far, Baja officials mentioned that 28 vehicles have been destroyed and about 13 arrests have been made throughout all those cities, including here in Tijuana. And Clara, did the, the people that you interviewed, did they talk about what it was like being on the streets and being forced to shelter in place there? I mean, is there, you know, security and guards, police everywhere now? So they did mention that it was a ghost town in Tijuana last night. Nobody was out. Today might be a little bit different now that there is some more reinforcement. We do see people coming through and going to Mexico from this pedestrian bridge. So um, some people might not be scared and just kind of want to go with their regular daily weekend and Saturday. All right. Claire Benitez is live for us along the border. We really appreciate your coverage. We'll check in with you a little bit later. Did you know a birth now, control pill doesn't need estrogen? To I don't know if you guys, uh, you know, got a sense of basically what's going down at, you know, in Baja California. And, and this is not the only place. I've, I've heard also the same reports from uh, the state of Chihuahua in Juarez. Uh, the, the, the same thing has happened. I think 11 people got killed, nine civilians and two people from their organization or something like that. And there's a lot of rumors as to why this is happening. A lot of people are saying that basically they're, they're trying to demonstrate their power because I believe their leader is it's sick or it's rumored that he's sick or whatever, whatever. I don't care about the reasons. What I, I want to touch on is two different things. First of all, it sucks that, you know, you're forced to stay in your home, even though I think it's still better if you're you know advised of violence before it happens but still it sucks and the mexican public is tired uh specifically because imagine drive down the street and you know you have this group of people that are your same people but they just have guns and stuff and they just decide to you know reach you of your vehicle so that they can set on fire to send a message you know but at the same time, I saw people on Twitter, as usual, calling for the Marines. It's time for the Marines to come in here. America, come save us, whatever, whatever, whatever. And because people are tired. And, it, and they're like, oh, like we need the, the, the army over here. The U.S. has to come help us and whatever, whatever. Look, I'm going to tell you something. As a Puerto Rican, I don't think, I don't know why. I see that uh, Daniel says, I'm from Chihuahua State, but from the southern mountainous region. Also, oh, you're you're not from Juarez, but I mean, but you're like, still, you're from the state of Chihuahua. So anyway, uh, but again, ah, uh, look at Roy Chess. He says, hey, at least COVID cases will go down if they stay home. Yeah, that's a positive. <laughs> but let me tell you something. You don't know, and it's the same thing that I, the same conversation I have with Venezuelans. You don't, and it's the same conversation I have with Cuban people. You don't know what will bring to call the Americans to come have tea with your country. It's better to always find an in house solution to your problem instead of waiting for White Sadi to come save you. Oh, you're eight hours away from Juarez, Daniel? Oh, then thank God you're not even that close to that. Thank God. So, again, you don't know what that is. And I am so tired of seeing that we want to say that we're independent, that we are this, that we're the most patriotas and the most patriotic people, but we're always trying to make America come and rescue us from ourselves from our own laziness. And yes, it's it's laziness because if you have a criminal organization or several criminal organizations, right? Why don't you just pick one 
or two or three or divide Mexico and say, you know what? Our government failed us because the criminal organizations, to my understanding, Mexicans that are here on the chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but to my understanding, cartels build schools, roads, and other buildings for people as well. They just don't, they don't only just commit crimes and set shit on fire. Okay. They also do certain things for the people of Mexico. But it seems to me that the government is too corrupt or either too corrupt or too fucking broke to even keep Mexicans on their structure. So it's time for you guys to understand, okay, there is time. Yes, Jose, we're independent, but, you know, we're independent, but looks to the U.S. to save us. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Valencia says, hey, but we are from where all the dope is planted and different organizations fight for possession of, oh yeah, that's true. That is, that is messed up. That is messed up. This is my thing. Why don't you just, as, as a group of people, just all pick, for example, let's say this part of Mexico belongs to this uh, criminal organization, to this cartel, and it's going to be a disenfranchise from Mexico and separate Mexico in four parts. How about that? Even though you're the same country, you come together to fight for your own stuff. Just separate and abide by the freaking cartel that runs your area and make a, a, an agreement with them and say, you know what? Let's legalize fucking drugs because they're going to keep selling them. The war on drugs doesn't work. Doesn't work here in the U.S. It's not going to work in Mexico. Just legalize the drugs over there. Look at the bright side. Just say, you know what? Mexico is going to become a drug paradise. You want to come uh, use fentanyl? We're going to have doctors here that are going to administer it to you. You're, you can come here from any fucking country in the world. They're going to administer it to you in a clean way, and they're going to make sure you don't overdose. And then you can go back to your fucking country, and you leave the money here with us. There's a lot of solutions that don't involve the Marines shooting civilians and bombarding your cities. What the heck is wrong with people? Just abide by their rules. Just say, you know what? If you guys as the cartels take the government out of the equation because they're fucking useless and we can come to this consensus that we get 5% or 10% or even 20% of the earnings of all this stuff, let's legalize all drugs here in Mexico. Let's make it a, a drug haven for people and let's have this little casitas for people that we can all rent like airbnbs and whatever so people can come consume them and go that could be an economy because it's still gonna happen i see that uh uh rakim says calling for the u.s to come is like asking shug knight to save me from my music contract yes <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you Jose says, you know, that is, you know what is the problem with that? Should I say it? Or, no, just say it, Jose, say it. <laughs> but we all know it makes too much sense. Danny Valencia says the problem, criminals, we always, we're always be criminals. They find other ways to make money illegally. Yeah, but that's the thing. It should not be illegal to make money out of drugs because what other trade Mexico has? It doesn't have any other, any other stream of income. Cripple other people's economy. And, and then... Again, you just help build the wall so that you can keep the Americans out and you tax them through hell. You want to come consume our drugs? Now you have to come to Mexico. Now you have to come here. Now you have to pay a hotel. Now you have to pay a fucking room. Now you have to pay a tax to cross the border into our land. Have some fucking pride. Come up with a solution. I'm just putting something out there. I'm just putting something out there. I see that Danny says, actually... Uh, the cartels are attacking Border Patrol and they can do anything about it, but 87,000 IRS agents for all this were trained to use deadly force. Yeah, that 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 makes no sense. I've always saying, I've always, uh, literally, I've always said it. This country works against our own interests. We need to start putting America first. And Roisha says, well, what is it to stop a bullying country from taking over that country like China or Russia? Well, this is the thing. This is my thing. With that amount of money that you're going to make, because let's keep it real, Mexican criminal organizations are making all those drugs. I, I'm on the, again, 
the Mexican uh, brothers and sisters in the chat can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm under the understanding that the, the Jalisco cartel alone is valued in $20 billion. That's how much money they have. We're not talking about Pedrito and Juancito from the corner that just have a graphic tee that's all fucked up and, and chancletas and some flip-flops. This is an organization that's, I mean, I, I get it. They send, they sell stuff that, that, that you know, intoxicates people, but this is a, a well-established organization. Very well-structured, better structured than the government at this point. Let's keep it real. So again, find a solution in-house. It's the same thing I tell Venezuelans and Cubans. Venezuelans are crying because they, oh, let's bring the U.S. because we don't like Maduro. We don't like that we cannot say the stuff that we can't say. Well, look at Julian Assange. He said whatever he wanted to say. And look where he's at. What makes you think the U.S. is not going to do that to you? Oh, but that, that's, that's because, you know, this, this, and that. I mean, you're not, again, we like to say that if you're white, things are going to get different. What race is Julian Assange again? Oh, wait. So I, I, don't, I don't understand why we have to wait for other people to come save us. Save yourselves. Save yourself. Let's see what Roisha says. I don't see how they're not doing this unless the profits are not known or probable. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. It's, he says, um, so if I was Russia or North Korea, I would take it over for the resources. Yeah, because, of course, because of the, of the drugs. And, and again, Mexicans have the resources to be independent and become a Mecca. Yeah, I get it. It's not the most prestigious. But, hey, Amsterdam did it for decades. If you wanted to freely go smoke weed, you would go to Amsterdam. That's how it was. And they made a shit ton of money with that. Why can't you do that with drugs? People are going to use them. It's, it's not a taboo. We just had Anne Hedge. We literally have her, a prestigious actress, consuming fentanyl. What are we talking about? And cocaine. And all these politicians, you think these politicians don't use drugs? <laughs> Good luck. I see that Daniel Valencia says extortion, sex trafficking, human organs, human trafficking, the criminals got more illegal enterprises. Drugs is just one of their biggest enterprises. They have their hands in other illegal activities. I get that, Daniel Valencia, but that's because they have to generate also more money to bribe your politicians, your cops, and your um, national army. If we take that burden, that's a, again negotiate with them. They're people. Negotiate with them. Yeah, T. Do you T? Do you remember when in Amsterdam, when in the world weed was like crack, and Amsterdam was the only place where people can go smoke it freely, and everybody went over there? I remember those days. You wanna you wanna do heroin? Pfft. We're going to open the doors for you. Yeah, 15 years ago. Exactly. It wasn't that long ago. When I was in my teens and my early 20s, I remember that was the spot. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a matter of, and I've said it many times, and I know it sounds weird, but you got to be like the creator of the thong. He wanted to create underwear, but he didn't have enough fabric. So he said, well, not everybody has the same sexual organs, but everybody has cheeks. So I'm going to leave them out. And he created his underwear. You can't, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. You guys have got to do something and it doesn't require the Marines. It's the same shit in Venezuela. Stop calling for U.S. invasion. You're about to have civil war right now in Mexico. Just make do with what you got. We know already that, unfortunately, the the 
the government allowed this to continue so much and now the cartels are super rich then they are the ones that are going to make the rules and you're going to have to abide by them then just abide by that that's how it is make agreements with them make a structure figure out what they want but it's time for you guys to do your own thing because i find it hypocritical that we have a lot of our latino bread and are here telling americans to get their stuff together to lift themselves up by their own bootstraps to work hard like you do but where is the hard work right now when mexico is at the brink of civil war and your only solution is to come here and cry so that the army can come save you that's not a solution that's like the kid that goes independent and the minute it has you know adversity it's calling the parents to come save him that you're not a fucking adult then you're not independent you know that title gets stripped from you i see that roisha says some chicks are, are so small they are non-existent saggy underwear before saggy tight jeans now i know <laughs> come on come on it is your duty and, and like i said americans have already the the empire has already taken away our critical thinking by not letting us uh think beyond the american military forces as a solution to our problems let's not also give them our patriotism how about that because the way i'm seeing it is that we're gift wrapping our patriotism and giving it to the americans and then complain when they talk shit about us and there's nothing we can do because we're literally telling them we're incompetent then you can't complain when they think of us as toilet cleaners because we are yelling at them that we're incompetent That's what's going on. I see that T says, I don't remember it being like crack, but I disappeared for an hour after my first three drags, told my friends I was going to the toilet and never came back for an hour. We were we were just in the first cafe. Oh my God. <laughs> I see that Daniel Valencia says, avocado, lemon farmers, trucking transportation companies have to pay 25% extortion tax to organize crime. Well, you know, again, now imagine if you say, hey, we're going to pay you 25% of extortion tax if you take out the government so we don't have to pay them taxes because they don't do check for us. If they would be doing check for us, we wouldn't have to pay you extortion taxes. Get my point? Use one to get rid of the other. That's how it is. That's how it, that's that's literally how it is. Again, that's the only way to make this work. And another thing that I keep I want to ask a question, and this is just a question of me asking here. What are the Mexican American community going to do if it comes down to a civil war? Are you gonna go over the border and fight? For your country, the, the culture that you love to proclaim and yell at the top of your lungs that you belong to? Are you going to help your brothers and sisters in Mexico? Or you expect other people from other countries to do the work for you, to support your people? Because I have not heard shit from any Mexican-American in this corner, at least. They're the first ones that will come and yell at you like this, this, I'm Mexican here, Mexican there. Where is your sense of patriotism and your sense of reason and compassion for your people and anger? Because if this was in Puerto Rico, trust me, I will be making a plan to go down there. I might not be good with weaponry or anything uh, when it comes to military forces, but I can help in other ways. I was a medical cadet for years. Are you going to help your people? Because it's very easy to watch it from afar, to watch it from the TV. 
But countries are built and are built by the hands of the people. Why aren't you in Mexico right now trying to help your people? I, that's always That always makes me very curious. And it's not just Mexicans. I say this to every Latino, Americanized Latino out here. What's going to happen if this breaks down? Are you going to help? Or are you going to just stay behind and let your people be killed and massacred and stuff? Are you going to watch them from afar? That's a good question. That's a good question. And I know a lot of people are not going to uh, answer that. But that's something that I would like people to answer. Ask yourself, what's going to happen if your country that's echoing for war right now? Because I want you to think about something. If the U.S. were to take the offer from the Mexican civilians... And they decide to send the Marines down there. Let's say in, a, in an alternate universe. I'm going to tell you something. Your people are going to start. You're going to see one of the most painful chapters for the Mexican people. Because I highly doubt that they're going to get treated any different than Yemen, Syria, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. They're not going to get any treated any different. National treasures are going to get destroyed and bombarded. Civilians are going to die in, in drone strikes. That's what's going on. That's what's going to happen. And what are you going to do? Because that's something I can never get an answer from Americanized Latinos. What are you going to do? Because it's very easy to wave a flag. It's, it's all fun and dandy to be called Latino and, and Mexican and Puerto Rican and Venezuelan and Cuban and Dominican and Costa Rican and Ecuadorian and whatever, whatever, until it's time to put in work. When that happens, then you don't want to do anything about it. Then you want to watch through CNN. I see that Daniel Valencia says, uh, probably not. To them, what happens there never comes in their conversations. Only us that live or constantly go back and forth there and family steer there really follow those events. Yeah, absolutely. I know that. But we know that, Daniel Valencia. We're asking them because we know their answer. Ah! MK says, like what Rakim told me, ain't nobody love their country more than a motherfucker that don't live there. Thank you. Bingo. Ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. They have 17 flags in their homes. They listen to Wanda every weekend. They drive down the street with corridos. But when it's time to defend your people and your land and what people stand for and Mexican values, oh, that you watch from CNN. Let them do whatever. I don't, I, I me no Mexican, right? It's very easy. Yeah, I agree, MK. He's, he's Daniel Valencia is one of the OGs. I'm, I'm pretty sure, again, this is not a diss to Mexican brothers and sisters, but it's just a call for an awakening. For an awakening so that you can be on the lookout because I am pretty sure your people is gonna come to a point where your people are gonna need you. They already need you, by the way. They already need you. This is not a drill. This is happening. The, the amount of violence that's happening. Imagine, I've always shown here 
videos. And these videos are so graphic about the brutalities that Mexican civilians and people and children have to endure every day. They're so graphic that I could not watch them and show them here. And the only reason they made it to news, national news, is because there's thousands of Americans at the Baja Beach Festival. Because if I guarantee you, if it was only Mexican brothers and sisters down there, this would have never made the news. Because mainstream media doesn't like to talk about us brown people. Oh, but if we commit a crime, we will be on the front page. So again, what you're going to do? What are you going to do? Either go down there, organize in any way, type or form. Organize and make something happen. But it's time to help your people. And it's not by sending cans of soup or water bottles. And I know a lot of them will be like, well, I have to worry about my life here. Then then, then don't start appropriating yourself the culture then. Because I've noticed that too. A lot of them get upset when people from this country call them gringos. But then if you're only investing in America, what are you? Oh, I have to worry about my life here. Okay, then, then what are you? Because the, the image of Mexico is changing into a very sad picture. We never in the history of Mexico have seen this amount of bloodshed. Well, yeah, we did. Correction. When Spain invaded native civilizations, that's when we saw that. That's what's happening down there. And if you have become comfortable knowing this truth as a Mexican-American and even as a Mexican, and you think that this is okay, you have adapted to this reality and just say, well, I mean, sucks for them. You are very messed up. You are beyond messed up. But hey, I'm the one that's anti-Latino, right? Remember? I'm the one that's anti-Latinos, that don't like Mexican people, that don't like Central Americans, that don't like Dominicans. But again, I can throw a pin on the floor right now and the, the Mexicans in this community and the ones that are LARPers of the Mexican culture, because those also exist in this little corner of YouTube that we have. The LARPers of Mexican culture are quiet about this. They're not presenting any ideas. They're not telling you what to do. They're not telling you what you could possibly do. They don't care. They're in the cave. They are in the cave. And this is what I said all the time. Stop listening and supporting people that at the end of the day, it's never going to do anything for you. Wake up. It's 2022. I see that Daniel Valencia says, we have a community police guards that community members patrol the community. I've heard that. And you know what I've heard, Daniel Valencia? You correct me, of course, because you know more about this than I do. But I'm under the impression that the Mexican army can overpower the cartels. They're just too corrupt to do so. That's what I've heard. I'm not sure. That's why I said, if they're that corrupt, at least you know what to expect from the cartels. Maybe that, that's something to consider. Make an arrangement with them. Say, hey, you know what? We'd rather have you than have this corrupt government and you at the same time. It has to be one of the two. 
And I'd rather go with you because the government is incompetent. And you guys and the cartels have the same problem, the government. Take them out of the equation. Food for thought, guys. Food for thought. And again, I'm going to say the same thing that I, I was saying earlier. Because I know a lot. This this uh, fake 99 cent store patriots that live out here, that come here cursing me out in English, are going to come at me. Because... I'm saying these things, but deep down they know I'm telling the truth. And I know they're going to try to insult and say whatever, whatever, whatever. But, I mean, we are at a point where the Mexican people are fed up. They need solutions. They don't need your anger. They don't need your emotions and your stupid streams. They need a fucking solution. I see that Daniel Valencia says a lot of indigenous communities all over the country took it up to themselves to protect their own people and territories, you see? And they don't even have all the resources that Mexican-American people have out here. And they can put those all together and get something done. Get something done. I don't care what it is. Get something done. It's time for you guys to either... Live up to what you say or stop saying it. Because otherwise, that's called hypocrisy. Do something. Otherwise, and, and again, I'm not trying to diss nobody, but this is why I say, this is what I mean when I say, we have no morale to talk about African Americans. With what morale? We can't take care of our own land. We have no control over our land. We have no control over our people. We have no control over our culture. We have no control even of our own safety and our families. Because let's not forget, the Mexican government also imposed very rigorous laws against Mexican civilians. They cannot, you know, have any access to any weapons whatsoever. So they can defend themselves. And don't tell me that the government doesn't know that the public is at risk. But still, they're not giving them any weapons. Die. That's what I said. I'd rather, if I was Mexican, I would say I'd rather abide by the cartel, make a deal with them. I mean, if you employ me, even better. Let's make this work. F the government and let's make Mexico a drug mecca for the world. And that's it. And you pay me a salary and you take your, your, your extortion tax out of it like we do in every other government. That's it. I don't know nothing. I didn't sell nothing. Nothing is illegal. Do what you want to do. That's it. Exactly, Jose. It is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Yeah. It's very easy. It's very easy. But guys, again, we're, we, we like to all the time. That's literally our spirit, you know? Oh, you know, Venezuela right now is being bullied by the U.S. Puerto Rico is the oldest colony in the world. The U.S. is boycotting El Salvador and what they're trying to build. Mexico right now is at the brink of a civil war and they need our help. That's us. La fiesta continua. As long as we have some fucking cheladas and freaking medallas and we can dance some reggaeton and Baboni is having concerts, we don't care. We don't care. We don't care that it's millions of Mexican kids that are growing up with this constant fear for their lives. They don't know if they're going to have another birthday, but hey, you know.
My party's still going. And if you dare to tell me that I am partying while my people are dying, you see, because I'm bringing you to reality. That's just that's just what it is. That's 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 the way it is. It doesn't matter how you slice it. That's what's going on. So, guys, <laughs> again, it's time to wake up. It's time to do something. Uh, inviting the U.S. is like inviting the wolf and trying to look and, and, and be like the Red Riding Hood and invite him over for cookies and tea. It's It's not worth it. It's not worth it. But, hey, if you want to have a sample and, you know, an experience of it, I invite you to go live in PR for a year. I'm inviting you to do so. You want to you wanna explore how it's going to be? Go there. Go over there, live it by yourself, and then come back here and tell me how is it that your freedom is worse than colonialism. And I'll play this small violin for you. Get the strap, get your stuff together, grow up pair, take care of your business, take care of your people, keep them safe. It's it's time for us to stop ignoring our people. I see that Daniel Valencia said, yet Latin Americans usually in the U.S. and in general see it as, I don't live there. That would affect my immediate family, so it's not my business. Exactly. I don't know how these people are not bothered what's going on. I Again, I saw those images. That bothers me. I, can't, I haven't stopped talking about it for days. How does it not bother you? Oh, but Latinidad, right? We're Latino. We're so united. We love each other. We're lovable people. How can you be fucking lovable? When you know, there are children down there getting massacred. And you're doing nothing. You're not even trying to make enough money out here so that you can go down there and broker a fucking deal with the cartels and just call it quits. Say, you know what? Let's just make this happen. Let's take AMLO out and all these corrupt cops and all these people. Let's take them out of there. It hurts to be Mexican today, even if you're not Mexican. But hey, I'm on the Latino after all, right? Guys, again, I don't want to keep getting pissed. Uh, I'm not having... Uh, uh, commentary today because I took too long. I spoke too much. I mean, this is a topic that needs to be discussed even further. And I'm not going to shut up to the people that hate that I bring this topic all the time. I'm not going to shut up. If you want to be Latino, it's cool to be Latino until it's time to be a fucking Latino. If you don't like it, if you don't like it, guess what? It's going to continue. Is going to continue. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going anywhere. I see that Jose says, we complain about being called gringos, but when we have a chance to do something, we do nothing. Yeah, we're bystanders. So again, the problem that your people in Mexico has, and I'm talking to all Latinos because at this point, it's all of us. Because at the end of the day, we're all Mexicans. They all call us Mexicans at the same time. So it's whatever. The problem that our people have down there is not solved with cans of soup and sending bottles of water. We need to come with new ideas where we can solve this problem. And if we have to, again, if we have to work with the cartels, we will have to bring them solutions that we can work, we can work with them, both for the public and they can coexist with one another. But we have to start generating ideas that are real because people are dying and they need a solution. 
Use your two brain cells to do something. Maybe you can go down there. Fine. But use your two brain cells to come up with something that's tangible and start promoting in your community. Let's start doing stuff. Yes, Danny in Valencia, I've seen it. Because they basically they're just making you guys uh, pray for the cartels. And there's it, it, the government is doing that. It's not the cartel, it's government. Government knows that Mexican people are getting killed every day. But they don't care because Mexican lives are cheap to the freaking government. And that if that doesn't piss you off, you are not worthy of the title. So again, for all the people that want to come at me and attack me that I'm anti-Latino, say whatever. Keep cursing me out. Keep focusing on if I'm anti-Latino, if you don't like what I say, whatever, whatever. But come up with a solution. I expect solutions. And if you come at me, and I'm going to say it right now, if you come at me with your stupidity, I'm going to make sure that I post it publicly. So that people can see publicly what I'm talking about. You have no solutions, but you want to attack the people that are sounding the alarm out here. Something has to be done. I don't care what it is. I don't care where the solution comes from. Something has to be done now. With that being said, guys, again, I'm not going to have a, a calling sector because, of course, you know, I've overstated my welcome. <laughs> but I want to remind you of a few things. And first and foremost, I want to uh, remind you that on September 11, I'm going to have my first stream in Spanish on Latin explaining in Espanol. Once I'm finished now this uh, stream, I'm going to link it in the description below. So make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell for notification and select all so that you don't miss a single episode in Spanish. So, toda la gente que me ve de Latinoamérica, ya saben que el septiembre 11 vamos a empezar nuestro canal Latin Splaining en español, donde vamos a discutir tópicos acerca de lo que está pasando en Latinoamérica, en nuestros países, lo que está pasando en América. Si te quieres enterar de lo que está pasando en la nación americana, pues entonces suscríbete al canal una vez termine el show va a estar en la caja de descripción abajo de este video. Así que, with that being said, guys, thank you very much for allowing me uh, to be here and for you guys to give me your time. That's something that you don't get back. So, again, I appreciate it. I am humbled and honored to always come here and share my thoughts and my perspective with the 368 Latin explainers. <laughs> okay. You guys are very important to me and to the people that are listening again from Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Russia. Thank you very much, guys. I am very flattered that I'm getting out there and that you guys love my content. I love you guys as well. So thank you very much. That has been all. Till next week, maybe I'll do an impromptu. It all depends. If something wild happens, I'm going to do a quick, uh, quick check-in. But if not, then we'll continue uh, down, you know, our, our lane on Sundays. So see you guys later. Thank you very much. Peace.